follow me over here. We're going to make things hot. All right, it's time. Y'all see me? This area right here represents about, gosh, 12 by 40. Okay, 12 foot by 40 foot. For those of you that are in Europe, I really don't know what it converts to. But this is my hot compost zone where I create two, basically two compost piles, one behind each center line of these two hoop houses. And uh, I build them up to about five, six feet tall. They get really, really hot. I circulate air through a tube that's beneath my feet, beneath my feet, and it moves the cool air from inside the greenhouse at night through this heated area and back into the greenhouse as warm air. It works really well. And all I have to do is basically build two compost piles. So because our gardening theme is the back to Eden method, we always have lots of wood chips, high carbon wood chips around. At the end of the season, I get a lot of high carbon wood chips, but they also have uh, nitrogen containing leaves and some new growth, etc. You know, the good stuff is mixed together in there and um, it tends to make that stuff really, really warm right when I want it to. We're going to be alternating different colors. And by different colors, I mean different color of carbon material. We're going to be putting some green stuff down, then we're going to be putting some brown stuff down, put a little bit of tan stuff, put some manure down. We're going to keep these colors cycling. Each time I put a thick, heavy layer down, I'm going to water it in. I don't need it to be super, super so soaked, but I want it to have some moisture to it because the biology needs moisture in order for it to be its best. So right now you can see a tiny little bit of greens. This is peppers from greenhouse number one on the other end over there. And um, there's more peppers and more there's nightshades in this other greenhouse. So we're going to be taking some of that out and pruning back those uh, perennials in there and sharing them into this pile as this pile uh, begins to, to grow to its peak. And uh, I think my dog's going to help. So where are we right now? Anyway, what did I do? Previously, about two days ago, I put down a layer of rabbit manure that I picked up from another close friend and gardener, grower. And I put a whole entire layer across the top of this. Then I covered it with a little bit of leaves. And because the leaves are falling in this area, it's very easy to pick them up. I've even got pine needles and whatnot over there. Great source of, uh, great source of media can come from right in this area, media area. And, um, and then we yesterday put this green material down. So it rained. So everything's pretty much wet. So I brought in the tractor. Red's over here at my right. And she's got one scoop of relatively new wood chips. They're only a couple of weeks gold. And did I say a couple of weeks gold? Yes, they're a couple of weeks gold. And I'm going to put them down on top, basically forming a pile. And we're just going to layer up, 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 and away until we finally get to the top. And once I get to the top, the height that I want to maintain these at, probably cycle more wood chips in to sort of encapsulate that and give it some insulation around the business end of it, which would be the center of the pile. And uh, that being the case, what will end up happening is uh, if there's any oxygenation that I need to apply to it, I'll be doing it with tubes, with steel tubes or plastic tubes. I'll be pushing them into the pile uh, rather than turning the pile. I don't actually have any intent to turn the pile. We didn't turn it last year. I'm not going to turn it this year. So if it does tend to get too hot, we have a simpler solution. I'll just remove the plastic cover. So uh, that, that, will, that will make it work exactly the way I want it to. And uh, if that doesn't do it, we'll put more air in training tubes into it and it'll be fine. But we haven't had any problems with it. We never had a problem with one overheating. I don't even have problems with overheating over there in their dedicated compost piles. So, um, so yeah, so here we go. Now for the labor part. Everybody loves to see Creedmoor do some labor. So why not? I'm going to oblige that with my pitchfork. All right. So basically this is it. We're just gonna lay these on top to make sure that the green manure that I put down stays bedded in. I don't want it migrating all over the place. And it's also important to note that all this green manure that you see here is right over the circuit, the air circuit that's inside the wood chips. It could be suggested that a more efficient system would have the air tube running through the entire pile, but I found that that wasn't that beneficial. We built one like that and it didn't seem to generate any more heat on the output side. So we don't do it that way. We just get the entire pile hot. It stays hot 
as it brings that cool air into it, the cool air is conditioned to warm and the calories are exchanged and you get a, a very, um, almost a warm, lukewarm flow, steady flow of air inside the greenhouses that keeps them at a pretty constant temperature. We'll get to that later. A lot of people have asked me what type of woods I want to use for this. Well, I really like to use pine and oak. Maple works well. I'd rather not use things like walnut and cedar because they break down so much slower. And if it's going to break down too slow, guess what, folks? It's not going to be generating a lot of heat either. And that's not what we really want. We want a balance between it breaking down quick enough to do the job we need which is to ultimately become a good quality compost to be put back into the system again. Or we certainly want it to produce a sufficient amount of heat to offset the cost of, of heating the greenhouses, say, for instance, with electricity or gas. Both of those are, those are viable options. But in the case where you want to do it for free, well, gas isn't free. Electricity is not free, at least not at this point in time. But really what I'm going to do is we're going to, we're going to basically talk through this first step, which is a single layer. And after this layer is done, I'm going to water it in and then we'll pretty much speed everything up by just taking some still shots along the way through progress. Y'all don't want to sit here watching me make these two compost piles for the next two hours. I'm fairly certain of that. I'm sure you got better things to do on your day off. You shouldn't be watching this video if you're at work, folks. Unless, of course, you work at the farm and you're looking to show it to people who have the same interest. In that case, go ahead, feel free. All right, so here I stand again before you. And I took, I took a whole entire plot of aged out marigolds that we had growing in the main garden. And I put half of them here and half of them there. And then I put another layer of rabbit manure on top of that so that we have those marrying together. Essentially, those are both greens or dark browns, if you want to call it that. <laughs> so the manure is definitely dark brown. And what I took from over there was still green. So there's plenty of nitrogen in that. So that's our hot layer. I'm going to go over the top of that with the aged wood chip. So that becomes the final layer and that will get wetted in again. But I already went ahead and watered this, so that's looking pretty good. You can see it's got that kind of dark brown look to it. Uh, we want to do that so that when the manure marries in with what's below it, it's sort of doing so in a liquid way rather than just sitting there as some dry media that's not going to do anything any good. All right, so here you go. There's the second layer. And now we're about to put the aged wood chips, some moisture. So the arithmetic is kind of simple. We want to do about a one, one, one. Put everything in an equal amount. Without a doubt, you can always use a rake to make sure everything is sort of incorporated well. We, uh, we won't be walking on this because it will be a pointy pile and that's the most effective shape that we've ever found. Seems to break everything down the fastest. Even a small amount of this material will generate a pretty considerable amount of heat. I'm just making them big because I want them to work continuously through the coldest months. And if they're too small, I don't want them to peter out right around, say, February when it's the coldest. Here, anyway. But they're very easy to make. And one of the reasons why I like rabbit manure, folks, is because it doesn't really stink. Well, maybe there is a rabbit manure that does stink, but this stuff doesn't. Doesn't have a harsh odor to it. Chicken manure can be pretty smelly sometimes. So if you're in an arid area, you're going to need to apply some moisture. 
fairly significant amount, as I understand, in order to get them wet enough to do the job. I've got wood chips now, but I want to put, I want to put more rabbit manure on top. So I've got a bag right here. It's got rabbit manure in it. I'm basically just going to use my gloved hands and open up the bag as best as I can, try not to make too much of a mess. That's a decent layer right there. We'll do the same over here. She's my best friend, but she doesn't always like water. So let's see how this goes. Oh, you got me stepping on your feet. Okay, I just sat on shower. That's it. That's another layer. It's kind of hard to see it going upwards until I get back. You can sort of see there's two distinct piles forming. And that's where we want to put the bulk of the media that we expect to get hot. Everything else is just going to be insulation. This decomposing media is laid into place. It'll get a whole entire cap of wood chips over the top of that. That way it does stay warm through the coldest months.